X-Men and Invincible are literally carrying sci-fi right now. If you need any superhero science fiction shows to watch, those are the two. You have to watch them. I decided to watch X-Men 97 just to check it out. You know, I heard a lot of good reviews about it. And uh, yeah, it did not disappoint. The first two episodes were great. And you don't need to watch the 1990 series to understand it. It takes you through it pretty well. And it fills the gaps in your knowledge about the, the, you know, the entire universe pretty well. And the animation was great. The acting was, the voice acting was great. And I think it does a really good job of, like, putting the characters at their full potential, sort of. Because in the animated series, which I started recently watching after, after the two episodes, I find, I found that the characters got defeated pretty easily. Either by, like, humans or, like, laser blasters or other mutants as well. But they also kept a consistency with their powers and abilities. But they were just defeated kind of easily. And you wonder, like, how is this even possible? So I really like that that's not really the case with the new show as well. And it definitely, yeah, watching the 1990 series definitely enhances your experience with the new show. So I would recommend, but you don't need to watch it. And yeah, so in the first episode of 97, uh, it's just one year after Professor Charles has been killed. And Cyclops is just kind of holding the team together because he's trying to live up to what Professor X was. And it's the exact same, basically the exact same episode as the first one in the animated series in 1990, where Sunspot is this mutant who's getting hunted by Sentinels and this anti-hate group as well. And the X-Men capture him, take him back to the headquarters, and show him around and show him what it is to be a mutant. And so the viewers at home see through his perspective of what the X-Men are and the past and the history of mutants and stuff like that. So that's a pretty interesting way to like fill in your dabs of knowledge. So I really do like that. In the second episode, um, so yeah, by the end of the first episode, Magneto's revealed to have the will of Charles and then now he owns the whole Institute and the X-Men. And in the second episode, Magneto is actually trying to change, I guess, for good. And after watching the, an- the animated series, I'm on season three out of five, by the way. I am also like kind of surprised by this because they do a good job of like displaying their friendship. But I'm also wondering if this is like if he has some s- sort of like sinister plot behind it all. So yeah, um, he's trying to change for the better. And Storm gets it with this anti mutant bullet, and she loses her powers. So um, I'm excited to see where they go with that. Uh, I was not expecting that to happen. And by the end of the episode, the real gene, someone who claims to be the real gene, comes and then asks for help. And by the third episode, we find out that Jane was cloned by Mr. Sinister. And the clone is the one that has been living with the X-Men for a while now. And the real gene comes back and then asks for help. And basically, the two of them give birth to, well, Cyclops and Jean give birth to Nathan Summers. And I didn't even know until after the second or third episode that Nathan Summers goes up, goes on to become Cable in the comics. So that's like really cool and trippy because Cable does show up in the animated series in 1990. So I don't know if they're following the same timeline, but if they are, that'd be like a cool follow up. And this is also kind of like one problem that I had with, with the old show. I mean, I'll cut them, I'll cut them some slack. It was the 1990s. I'm gonna cut them some slack on the animation and everything else and all that. I don't expect it to be outstanding. At the same time, the amount of times that Mr. Sinister has showed up and been a villain of the X-Men is almost countless. And I'm on season three out of five, so he might still show up again. And I, you just have to wonder how this guy hasn't been defeated time after time again, like permanently. And he's still here in 97 looking for Cable. And I don't really know why he's looking for Cable either, because surely there are other... um mutants that you can like blend DNA together with to create like a more powerful mutant but maybe we get an explanation of that so yeah um Mr. Sinister wants Nathan Summers and he wants to create the perfect mutant weapon and the X-Men stop that from happening but guess what Mr. Sinister still escapes I'm pretty sure and but like unfortunately Nathan contacts this like virus and so the real gene and Cyclops have to send him to the future. So I think that'll be really cool. If they're following the same timeline, then he will become Cable and then show up in the animated series from 1990. 
So, um, yeah, so that's kind of tough. And then Storm meets with Forge, who we do see in the 1990 series, who claims that he can restore um, Storm's powers. And then in the fourth episode, it's kind of like a filler episode. I hope we don't get more of these. I mean, now that I think about it, I guess filler, fillers can aid in, like, character development and then learn, learning more about a character. But we don't really need that in, like, what, 10 episodes of 20 minutes, I think. I don't know how long it is. I'll check. But if it's, like, a short runtime in each episode, I wouldn't want filler episodes. I just wanted to get to the plot straight away because I think this is what a lot of, like, this is what strongly negatively impacted The Flash as a TV show. And I know it's like a strong comparison to make with X-Men 97, but you never know what you have with any show. And that's just by having fillers that go nowhere because you overdo it. But yeah, it's just, so Jubilee and Sunspot, the new character, are transported into a video game by someone named Mojo. And funnily enough, Mojo shows up in the 1990 series. So, yeah, it definitely does enhance the experience to watch the old show because you will probably get a lot of references and new characters that show up. But, um, yeah, so far, I recommend the series. It's really good. I love the animation. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to see where to go with it. So, yeah, that's about it. Peace.